Yeah, if, if you want to plan, if you plan to live in the middle, please leave now to let people have the full talk. Hello? Can you speak up? Hello, hello, yes. <laughs> hello, hello. The microphone doesn't like me. <laughs> can you, are you comfortable with the mic? Uh, yes. But oh, we can hear you. Okay, no. okay, okay, great. Okay, so now we're going to have our next speakers. Uh, so uh, this is Paula de la Rose. She's talking about the new internet and uh, IPFS. So hello, uh, thanks to be here. Um, I am very excited to be here and to present this topic I really like. Um, I'm also turning uh, 33 years old today, so happy birthday to me. Yes. <laughs> um, so, um, she already told me that I'm um, a security analyst in my daily life. They're back in Madrid. Um, but that's not uh, my only job because I also try to investigate about internet censorship, um, privacy, and digital rights. In fact, we have an association there in Spain with more than 700 members called Interferencias, I co-found. Um, it's all about uh, creating events, speeches, and all of that about uh, these topics. So if you have questions about this association or you are interested in creating a version outside Spain, just tell me, please. I, we are very glad to have new members. Um, this is our RAD logo, so yes. Um, so now, uh, we are going to speak uh, mostly in this uh, speech about IPFS, which is uh, interplanetary, interplanetary file system, uh, which is created um, by protocol labs. Um, I want to explain our context, our digital context, and why we need to start thinking about a new internet, a new way of thinking the internet. Um, also, I would like uh, to uh, tell you some challenge about security, because in the end, that's my main job. Uh, some conclusions. Um, I would love to hear your questions or suggestions, ideas surrounding these topics. So what is IPFS? Um, IPFS is a distributed peer-to-peer hypermedia protocol. As, as I said, it's developed by Protocol Labs, and it's uh, thought to be permanent, uh, resilient, and a way of storing information on the internet without losing efficiency on its way. So, basically, how does it work? So, have you guys uh, heard about Fahrenheit? Uh, 451, maybe. It's an amazing book. It's uh, a science fiction story written by Ray Bradbury. 
Um, so I really don't want to spoil you guys because it's actually one of my favorite books. But I think that uh, it goes in handy to understand what IBPS wants to achieve. So in the book, uh, pictures a society in which books are being burned down by five fighters, and sometimes almost alongside their own owners. In, so society is controlled through media. Um, so in the book, there's um, a group of rebels that tries to read and learn by hair some books in order not to lose that culture heritage. So if I haven't mistaken, I think this is what IPFS is trying to do. They are trying to save some uh, data which is going to be lost on the internet if we keep using or uh, classic methods and protocols on the internet. So it works through nodes, which conforms an horizontal network. And when a file is uploaded to the network, it is divided into blocks, which have metadata, um, uh, which, with information which is used to join again all the parts, all the blocks again, so you can get the, the fail. Um, it used Hassan's encryption in SHA-1 and other uh, encryption methods, uh, you can see the docs. And users are also able to upload blocks atomically, so you don't need to divide them. Uh, pin data, see information of a file, uh, blocks using common line, and apart from common line there's a local interface uh, using um, you know, a uh, web interface uh, and an easy to launch node widget for, for Firefox. So, uh, uh, let's see. So, now I'd like to explore our context. So, we are in the information age. Uh, actually, internet put me right. Did you know, guys, that actually the first message on the internet that was sent was low, almost like LO, uh, almost 50 years ago. Um, it, it was supposed to be login, but the connection broke. So, <laughs> yeah. So, when uh, hours later, uh, the, the message was uh, sent uh, right. So now um, there are hundreds of millions of internet users, not only reading but creating content in form of text, pictures, videos, code. So nowadays we trust in tech. We trust in smartphones, devices, computers for almost everything, like um, from our health to our education or our jobs. So since the internet started, through so many uh, content have lost uh, on the sea of the information. Um, so for that reason, for example, it says the Internet Archive. Um, but it's known that our way of thinking, uh, communication is, um, you know, it's all about velocity. We want our message on our content to be fast on the internet, and this is ha this has a lot of advantages because we can talk to our families or friends even we are so far away. Um, but it also changed the way we think, and this could be, you know, dangerous. It's compromising from the point of view of security because. Uh, Maybe if you are communicating fast, you don't have enough time to think if this data or this information you are sharing on the internet is actually safe to be shared. I know that, I know that you guys are interested in this because you are in the privacy red dev room, okay? So you are probably very interested in how information is uh, private uh, on the internet. But if you're like me, um, you probably have encountered a lot of people that says, hey, but what do I care about this? Because, you know, I'm not doing anything wrong. That, that's the, I, I've heard that sentence a lot. Um, I'm not like doing anything wrong. Criminals do. So I don't care if my information is out there. So I think this has a lot to do with velocity on the communications. So, um, 
Okay. Uh, this led us to censorship. Uh, the same that we don't care sometimes about massive uh, surveillance or that kind of problems that are actually pretty huge and common on all current internet situation, uh, censorship is also a huge problem right now in so many, many countries. Uh, most of the censorship techniques include like, uh, um, blacklisting or uh, dynias blocking, that kind of stuff. But um, so even though there are so many countries that are suffering these kind of problems, uh, at the same time, most of us don't really care. I know that most of us, like right here, right now, do care. But when I say yes, I mean like community and users generals of the internet, because internet and open source, it's all about empathy. So we, when we think about ourselves, we are thinking about ourselves in general. That's why I'm in security and probably that's why many of you are here, because we really want to share stuff in the community. So we really want to take care of the privacy of the ones who really are not caring about it right now because probably they don't know the the situation. So I, w one of the things that I like the most about IBFS, going back to the main point, is that they are aiming to have a user-friendly stuff, so they can offer this kind of service for efficiently uh, saving data on the internet um, for all the users. So now we have uh, explored our current context. I really want to aim to uh, what all about this new internet. Let's explore the possibilities of a distributed internet and how we can change our daily life. So uh, just wait a moment. <coughs> so uh, talking about the IPFS, what IPFS can offer uh, for to solve these kind of problems. So IPFS is distribute, which is already good because we said it's horizontal. It's net, uh, an horizontal network. So if we don't have a, cent a centralized system, it's easier to be secure because if one node or two nodes are compromised, it doesn't mean that the rest of us are. Um, is resilient, so in case of internet censorship problems or in a developing country problems, the, the internet probably breaks. Uh, that doesn't matter because uh, data could be safe anyway and distributed between other nodes. And also it's open. We are in, in FOSDEM, so it doesn't, <laughs> I don't need to explain why that's good. Um, but it's not all about good stuff because, well, the system of IBFS that I will technically uh, more, uh, dis describe more later uh, have difficult names because uh, their identifications are created with hashes. So it's very difficult to remember. Um, that's not pretty uh, good for normal users or even us. Maybe we should try to note down the links and that doesn't work very good. Uh, so also, um, as the content created uh, name different hashes for different files, when you change a file or a web page that you already created and your users know, the name also change. There's a couple of um, solutions given by the official page for this, but they are not pretty good yet, so that's the problem too, changing the address of uh, an already known service. Um, also, in general, distributed uh, systems are not a very intuitive idea for normal users. So when we are, okay, so when we are trying to reach the current users to use a new internet, we have to first be, um, teach them about decentralized system and decentralized philosophy because uh, if not, probably they are going to mess up. I know that because uh, when I'm working in security, there's a lot of clients that got stuck in services that were so old 
um, they haven't learned the new techniques. Um, many, many of the vulner vulnerabilities are uh, because of that. So it could be a big problem in the future if we don't try to educate right in distributed system systems. So how does technically works um, IPFS? So actually set up on, on the computers is very easy because you only have to download and fib install and start. I'm speaking about Linux here. Um, this is how the files work. As I said before, we have a file. It's, uh, it works with different blocks. The, each block has metadata. And we can also upload blocks instead of uh, files. So this is an example of uploading a file, in this case, uh, a ducky. So we upload it and pin it. And then we can head it back with the name of the hash created uh, out of the file. There are some applications already created with this technology, for example, Killcore, which is um, uh, a Deadman's Pedal online, and Brick, which is similar to Git, but using decentralized systems. Uh, so we are facing basically, as we said, uh, two main uh, problems here, like security challenge, socials and technical. Social, because uh, uh, we should really have to stop normalizing censorship. We really have to uh, teach and educate about learning uh, decentralized systems. Um, we really have to understand security and technology is not magic. And technical, because um, already, right now, for example, uh, IPFS is not very good for storing secrets or passwords or something like that. But we can help it using GPG. Uh, we can infect the network, like uh, using files which are um, corrupt or compromise the node if, we are using, if the servers or the containers for the nodes are not secure. So, for example, encrypting and, and sending, this will be a kind of uh, uh, for solving the problem of secrets. Uh, but you are storing permanently something uh, encrypted on, on the network. Uh, you can infect the network. This is uh, less likely to happen because it requires some social engineering. Um, well. Uh, it's so good that you could build some IPFS node on servers or containers, but servers or containers, as you probably already know, uh, could be compromised. So if the nodes are compromised, the server, uh, if the servers and containers are compromised, the network is. So there, there are many attacks uh, that um, vulnerabilities that can be done uh, on containers or uh, servers. So, if the network is horizontal, that's, that's the problem. So does this mean we should give up on this? Absolutely not. Because uh, this means there's an exciting path to explore right now in front of us. It could be difficult from the point of view social and technologically. But uh, as an open source developers, analyst, admins, it's our responsibility to face these new responsibilities and to help users to use and understand these technologies even more. Thank you. Any questions? How do we, uh, how do big corporations see the idea of the decentralized internet, knowing that they basically own the internet as we know it today? They own the servers, they own the DNS server, they own everything. Uh, sorry, I, I, I couldn't hear you. Could you please, like, uh, okay. higher? <laughs> okay, so uh, how do big corporations see the idea of the decentralized internet? I, I really can't. I can't hear what he's saying, so. How do big corporations see this, 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 this technology? 
Corporation? Corporations. Like Google. Oh, 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 the corporation say this. Okay. So, um, I really don't know. I hope, the, um, I hope they are pissed up because <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> If there are some, I just don't like this. But um, probably they, they will adjust if these distributed systems really is uh, a thing in the future, because that's what they do in the end, always. But um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Another question? Um, can you go a few slides back? Because you showed an example of usage of IPFS. I think it was Kilcord and another one. Can you go back to that slide? Because I was wondering, yes. it was quite fast. Yes. Um. So what, what does this break? Oh, break is uh, kind of like uh, Git. OK but using distributed system. Right. Also, Gilcore could be used with Ethereum. So, yes. Okay, thanks. Okay. So, so uh, does it also take into account, uh, does it provide an option to make annotations for uh, text, if you, if you want to annotate text? And uh, uh, like, does it, uh, uh, is there a way to, uh, right now you get outdated links uh, uh, on the internet if a surfer goes down. Uh, does it take into account that a link will always keep on working? So if I understood, so the first question was if you... Oh, can you annotate text? Yes. Um, okay, so you can keep updated using uh, something called Dynes Link, which is explained in the official documentation. So it's like, um, so the hash change, the hash of the, of the main file change or the web page change, but you can kind of use um, uh, a previous um, tag on the link. So it, uh, when, when you visit the, the previous tag, you will keep updated with the rest of the hash. I don't know if I'm explaining right here, because <laughs> the documentation explains this with all the examples. But there is a way of keeping updated, but um, it's not perfect right now. All right, thank you. Hi, Paula. Uh, thank you for introducing IPFS to us. What would be the, the thing, the one thing that you would like to see on IPFS that is not there today? Um, well, as, men as already mentioned, um, I think, well, you said about IPFS, right? Yeah, IPFS. Like, what would be the feature or example or application that you would like to see built with that technology that I doesn't exist today? I think I would love to have um, a really stable social network with IPFS. Because, you know, we have um, Mastodon and such um, in exchange or of Twitter and stuff. But um, like uh, having this um, um, philosophy of not losing data, um, we will need us to change our way we think about social networks because we will be more careful about what we post on the internet. So I would love to see that. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, two things. Um, um, I ask myself what happens if um, the last peer goes down who has my files. Maybe you could just quickly mention the pinning and the pinning services because that, that might be useful. And another thing about Mastodon, which is based on ActivityPub, uh, my personal opinion is, um, I did a demo last week on Indie Web Week, um, uh, ActivityPub plus IPFS. I think that plays really well together, 
Um, and um, IPFS could just become an alternate storage system for uh, ActivityPub. What I missed was the, the pinning, you know, pinning and pinning services. So, oh, so. Did you get it? Yes, but th uh, they are telling me that time's up. So if you guys are ready, so um, if you have a question, please ask me right now because they are telling me to like stop right now. So. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you for attending and don't, don't forget to um, leave uh, constructive feedback on the website for each speaks you see in FOSDEM. Thanks. Thank you. 